All right, for number seven, we have Professor Wei observed that students have difficulty remembering the information presented in his lectures. He modeled the percentage of information retained, R, by the function blah, ¿cierto? where T is the number of days after the lecture. T is, has to be greater than or equal to zero because there have to be days passed after the lecture. It wouldn't make sense to have negative days here. See? All right, so he found that one day after a lecture, students have forgotten 50% of the information presented. I think that's been pretty optimal. But anyways, find the value of P, ¿cierto? So right now, the value of P, it will, if we look at the equation in its raw form, we have one thing we don't know, two things we don't know, three things we don't know, ¿cierto? And so if you have one equation and three things you don't know, bro, it's not good enough, ¿cierto? But if I plug in this and this, ¿cierto? I will know this and I will know that. So now I would have one thing I don't know, and one equation, and that is something I can solve. So this is our game plan, and let's see what happens. See? So for part A, I'm going to plug in the information. Um, RT, ¿cierto? Is already in percent, ¿cierto? Because he modeled it as a percentage of information retained. It's already in percent. So that actually allows me to plug in 50 like this. See? Careful with that. It's an important detail. 50 equals 100 times E. E is just like a value. It's a, similar to pi. It's in my calculator. It exists. If you want to look at it, it's actually over here. It is that. E is 2.71. ¿Vale? So yeah, E is something that we know to the power of negative P times T, which we said was 1. ¿Cierto? I'm just going to write it again real quick. This is 100 E to the power of negative P. See? All right. So... Now we need to get p alone. Now p is on an exponent, which is really hard to deal with, ¿cierto? And so when it's on an exponent, one of the very few tools that we have in this course is this thing called calc intersect, ¿cierto? So we're gonna graph this as a line in y1, graph this as a line in y2, do calc intersect, and see what happens, ¿cierto? So just to leave very clear, this is y2, this first one is y1. ¿vale? What the hell do I mean by y1, y2? Why are we intersecting? I'll explain in a second. Uh, y1 is going to be 50, as we said earlier. y2 I already have here. ¿cierto? To the power of neg negative x. Um, and now we're going to calculate intersect. ¿cierto? Now, when we do calculate intersect, we're going to get the value of what we're missing. ¿cierto? Because whatever makes this true, whatever equals it, whatever equals two lines, is going to be its intersect, ¿cierto? That's also why we do calc intersect. And whatever makes this intersect, whatever makes this true, is whatever value of p works, or so to say. See? That is intuition. So, we're going to go over here. We're going to change our window a little bit because we want to make sure that the answer shows up. Because one of my lines is at 50, I should at least put a y max of 50. And just so that it looks nice, I'll put 60. See? And my x value is probably going to be pretty low because we're talking about weeks. Just to make sure that I can see the graph, I'll put uh, two weeks. You know, you never know. So we graph, we get something that looks like this. And that intersect up top is the value of p that works. So I'm going to do calc intersect. Select the first curve. Select the second curve. We make sure it's on the second curve. Yes, it is. And now we have guess. See? The guess thing is really when you have two intersects. So for now, it doesn't really matter. But I just guess near the intersect. So you don't worry about having it like super close. Guess near the intersect. And we have that. ¿cierto? So our p-value is going to be 0 0.693147. ¿sí? That is for part A. So um, now we need to use this model, right, to find the percentage of information retained by his professor. A lot. Retained by his students, sorry. 36 hours after Professor Weiss's lecture. See? And so what a lot of people do here for part B is the following mistake. Think about why it's a mistake. They say, okay, so R36 equals 100 E times negative P, which we said was negative 0.693147. And now we plug in T, which is 36. Why is this a mistake? It is a mistake because T is in number of days. 
We got this in hours. So 36 hours is how many days? Well, there's third, there's uh, 24 hours in one day, and this is 1.5. So 36 hours is the same as 1.5 days. See? 36 hours is the same as 1.5 days. Since this equation or function or whatever is in days, I cannot plug in hours. I need to plug in the days. See? So this is what we're dealing with. And how much is that? Let's go to our calculator. 35.35. See? So for part B, we get a value of, or for R1.5, better said, we get 35.3553, which is the same as 35.4%. See? Given the context of the problem, that's what we're talking about. This is for part B. Now they tell us that based on his model, Professor Wade believes that his students will always retain some information from his lecture. We need to state a mathematical reason why Professor Wade might believe this. There's a couple of reasons to approach this, ¿cierto? The visual aspect, if we look at our graph once again, is that you can see that at the bottom, there's like something that it never quite touches, ¿cierto? Um, it doesn't go into the negative values, see? And so you can say a uh, horizontal asymptote, see? Horizontal asymptote. An asymptote is something that the graph like never touches. See, so if I have a y and an x here, and I have something that goes like that, ¿cierto? my horizontal asymptote would be here. See, my function never touches the line. It comes incredibly close, but it never ever touches. See, so this would be a horizontal asymptote. A vertical one would be something like that. ¿cierto? Okay, so you can say there's a horizontal asymptote looking at the graph. You can also say, um, these guys will always retain something because looking at my equation here, ¿cierto? there is no negative value. See? If you look here, for example, there is no negative value. Yes, there might be a negative exponent, but the, the whole thing on the right side will always, always be positive. So that is another way you can answer. You can say that RT will always, always be positive. Both of these ways are valid ways of approaching. That is part C. Part D, we've got that. We need to write down one possible limitation of the domain of the model. See? Here, there are like so many different things you can say. I think the most intuitive one is that, hey, not everyone, unfortunately, will remember Professor Wei on their deathbed, ¿cierto? In many, many years from now. And so, one possible limitation from the domain is that uh, people don't live forever, ¿cierto? Some people die at some point. I mean, knock on wood, but maybe someone has like a car accident or something, and after three days they'd forget because they're not around anymore, ¿cierto? So people don't live forever. That is one approach. There's a lot of different answers you can do here. I'd rather just have you think and just show you really the, uh, the answer key, but also like large values of t's are not forever, are not possible anyway because people don't live forever. Someone may might die halfway. Um, the answer key has it like this. See? It has all of this here. You can pause, take a moment. There's so many different approaches. I think you guys can figure it out. Uh, but yeah, that is about it.